I'll start by asking a very straightforward question, which is how much power today does the world consume? Well, it turns out it's about 16 terawatts. Now, what that says is it's 16 terawatts of power that will represent as this little dot in the upper left part of the screen. How much renewable energy is available to us? Well, that's the other dots on the screen, and those are provided by sunlight. There's about 10,000 times more energy given to us by sunlight than what we consume. Or another way of putting it, in an hour of sunlight, if we can collect it all, we could power the planet for the whole year. And indeed, we're doing it. We use solar technologies to do so, utility scale or residential scale. One thing you'll notice on either one of these the primary unit that collects the sunlight is a silicon solar cell. There are others, but silicon will be the one that you'll most often see. How thick is the silicon, or is this the final solution? The answer is no. On the left is a thickness of a silicon wafer compared to a thickness of a hair, compared to on the right to the emerging nanoscale films enabled by nanotechnology that we have discovered over the last decades that can now open up opportunities for lightweight and integrated solar use. Here is one example of a nanoscale device. This is a quantum dot enabled tin film solar cell that is semi-transparent. And why would you want to make them semi-transparent? Well, you can make two of them. And if you want, you can make one of these, sunglasses. <laughs> now, these are semi-transparent, so I can look through them, but at the same time, I can collect energy and power electronic devices with them. Why? Because if I happen to have hearing aids or wireless earphones, I would never need to recharge them again, as the power collected even in the daily use would be plenty to do the rechargeable opportunity. Internet of Things that we've been speaking of, how do you power it without having such portable sources? And even more, these types of technologies can be developed in ways that you cannot see before. Printing. You can take a piece of paper and you can print nanoscale films to make a solar active surface. Why would you want to do that? Well, because you would like to have any object you touch any surface you interact with, is it documents or packaging or newspapers or communicate, whatever it is, to have an ability to have power attached to it. And most importantly, such an ability, rather than for us in the developed world, it's for the developing world. This becomes a transformative metric. Watts per kilogram, give me some power for a very little weight and you'll be able to give me a very transformative opportunity. This video shows you one of those solar cells actually being used. Light shines on it, and you generate enough electricity to power that little clock up on the top. But it is a piece of paper, so you can use it like any other piece of paper. Load it in a printer, print right on top of the solar cell, and let's check if it still works. <coughs> Attach electrodes, shine light, it still works. This piece of paper is generating enough power to run the common electronic device. That in itself, is a transformative opportunity, but it's just the beginning. Because this particular piece of paper still is most of the useless weight is in the paper. Can we thin it down? And the answer is yes, you can. This particular solar cell is so light, it can sit on top of a soap bubble. It generates six watts of power per gram of the cell, or another way of putting it, six kilowatts per kilogram. As a tin film coating, it's an additive surface that will make any surface active. But maybe you don't like the color, in which case we'll give you this one. This is another nanostructured solar cell that doesn't look like anything because it doesn't absorb any visible light. We might as well show you one of these operating. This video shows you the cell, and we're going to attach to it to the electrodes, and again, a little motor, and see if just a common room light can be enough to power this particular motor. It is. The piece of glass coated with nanostructured films that are designed not to absorb visible light, but absorb infrared and UV light, that is what you're seeing. Solar cell technologies now can be completely different from what you've seen before for personal use, maybe on regular glasses. For portable use, this e-reader would never need to be recharged again if its surface happens to be made of these solar cells. And indeed, a skyscraper with windows made of these solar cells could maybe provide a quarter of the electricity of a typical office building. Solar has been penetrating remarkably well into our world. 1% of 
of today's electricity is provided by solar. If you look historically, go back to year 2000 and just look year to year to year, the growth rate of silicon deployment is annually 40%. Now let's project into the future at that growth rate. And this is what you'll see. By year 2030, about 115% of world's electricity could be provided by solar. Or could it? Where the challenge is in the storage. Thank you.